Me with the subtitles um with the series about me moving from baltimore to houston and i'm gonna give you some tips about finding an apartment so let's just get right into so, it i don't know if you guys watched my previous video um i dropped some stuff about the traffic um couple like a history of me and how i moved a little story time so as you know when you first move you gotta find somewhere to live so um what i did was when i first moved down i was actually watching some other vloggers and their methods was kind of backwards kind of not really giving me like common sense it wasn't really like you know giving me what i was looking for so i just kind of like you know took my experience what i do in my hometown when i'm looking for an apartment you know the regular way Zillow and all that apartment list but it's such a big city the search you can still downsize it or whatever you still gonna have a big um search result so um I actually went on another girl she was from Virginia and she just moved to Dallas but she had um said this company is called smart city smart city living and then you put wherever you're going to move to so for houston is smart smart city living htx so once i clicked on their page on instagram i went to multiple like you know how you scroll and say follow this or whatever it was like other houston apartment locators so with the chairs videos you know get your attention some places put the some pages put the amount square footage um how long the sale if they having a special you know give you some details and then you have some that's gonna say dm me for pricing so i went through that whole thing with all of those people but as i started like really getting into it like okay i see what they're doing they just basically they have contracts with these particular apartments and these apartment buildings they mostly are luxury living but they have regular apartments too but you just have to figure out what is for you um most of my notice were in midtown downtown west houston which is like the gallery area um you know kind of in that circle but if you it just depends on who what type of person you are and what you are looking for so um so me I'm from a city. I love the city life, especially when I'm still trying to enjoy the city life, I'm just moving to a new city. So I want to network, okay? Due to Houston being so big, um, when I first did my tour of driving around, you know, before I first moved down here and where I wanted to live and, you know, just sightseeing, I wanted to, I like, the South Houston part better than North Houston, okay? It has its pros and cons on both sides. But um, if you wanna live like downtown, midtown, you know, around the action where, you know, everything's going on, you probably wanna live South Houston. Um, I live in the gallery area. Um, I actually love it around here. Um, where I stay is quiet. I live near some residential homes, but I'm like eight minutes, give or take, from the Gallery Mall. And then when I go on the Main Street, which is Westheimer Road, if you research it and everything, you'll hear about like Westheimer Road, which is a very, 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 very long street. Um, and once you go on that street, it's everything. Like it's all the stores, everything I would need. Um, one thing I do love about Houston is that it's a store everywhere you go. Even like no matter what community you live in, you're going to be around something. So even though Houston is a big city, I would not live down here without a car. Like a reliable car, I would not live down here at all. Because, I mean, the buses run, but you, you come into a new city. I don't know if you want to be catching... The bus i mean you're not in your hometown you know you really don't know the city like you know so i wouldn't suggest you catch no public transportation when you first move to a new city 
lifts okay that's fine and dandy but it costs like that stuff stays up but if that's your only way of transportation then you know but if you can really just get a car when you come down or before you move then i would highly suggest because everything is a stretch especially if you're from up north you used to just being in your community and you know you drive 15 minutes here 10 minutes there 15 minutes here and you're there here you're going to be driving 15 minutes or more most likely to get to like your actual destination corner stores gas station whatever they they there everywhere um grocery stores they everywhere like almost every within 10 miles is about four or five of them so you can't it's like you're not gonna be without food but if you want to go somewhere like walmart target you know things of that nature depending on where your apartment is station you're going to be driving at least 15 minutes or longer so i don't know if you want to keep catching lifts and ubers everywhere but you know like i said if that's your preference that's your preference um so um when i picked the apartment like i said i went off of what i'm used to so i wanted to live in the city so that's what i chose to do but i noticed that their downtown is like not like the downtown i'm used to so if you ever google baltimore harbor canton maryland federal hill maryland it's that's the downtown i'm used to really busy bright lights pretty harbor boats around that's the downtown i'm used to from where i'm from so if you're from new york you know your downtown is very busy constantly loud bright so with houston it's the total opposite it's it's not really that busy i mean it's busy enough because cars pass through you have the you know the main um light rail runs through downtown the apartments are higher okay i'll get on that top in a couple minutes but it's not like the regular downtown like most of the big buildings down there are vacant most people are working from home you know this post covid so most people are working from home and even like it's not even a lot of restaurants most people live downtown because they work at the medical center um or their job is down there but it's really like if you're looking for excitement things like that what you're used to it can be like because you have the highway around and you have the light rail so that'd be your noise but other than that it's pretty quiet i ain't gonna say that quiet but it's it's very settled to be considered downtown of a, of a big city um and i don't like it it's very like i don't know it's just not giving me downtown the big city it's it's not really giving me that so that's why i moved to the galleria area which is like midtown if you see kirby if you heard of those things that's where i like to be like real upscale um then you have a part that's like mid class like it's balanced because i'm like i can switch it i can be because i'm from the hood but i can get real bougie real quick so i like to be in the balance and that's what i found so i me pref me personally i like this area people from houston um they like this area depending on who they are so if you're a person that does not like to be around a lot of people all the time but this is houston so you will be around a lot of people all the time unless you live on the outskirts like outskirt outskirts where you know farmland and things like that but if you're living in houston you're going to be around a lot of people the population is eight million people so you kind of like can do the math um depending on your price budget okay like like i have to tell a lot of people or whoever asked me for advice or whatever the case is price budget matters in the south because you well, I could say me, for example, okay? I'm from Baltimore, so paying $1,300 for one bedroom in a hood or like not so cute area is normal to me, okay? People from Houston pay that much for a whole house, okay? Or a part, they pay less than that for certain apartments in different areas, okay? You wanna live on the outskirts like Spring, Texas, Cypress, um, there's a couple other ones. 
and the rents be cheap. Even like some place out Pearland, 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 Texas, um, and Katy, you might can find something under eleven under eleven hundred. That's really nice, like a one bedroom. That's really nice. Um, if you're trying to live in the, the Galleria area, which is West Houston, the places that are under twelve hundred, you have to watch like be very mindful you cannot just go for pictures anywhere you go okay um houston well i'm gonna say houston because it's it's called promo so people companies or whatever they're gonna display their model apartments they're gonna display the best part of the complex they're gonna display you know a nice calm day or whatever the case is so you want to make sure you go there, um, go to whatever city you want to for at least a week. So I'm gonna make another video about scouting, but um, for just apartment wise, you know, just go there for a week. And before you go, you have all the places that you wanna view, tour or whatever, schedule appointments, cause now you gotta schedule because of COVID. So you wanna schedule all your appointments and go there when you are in the city you're moving to for that week or two, okay? You need to go to these places to actually see the unit that's gonna be available. Or even if you look at the model, you can see what's around the area, the type of place, like the type of people gonna be in and out of the apartment building. Like this is real stuff. Like I'm not sure calling anything because you know, just because it's in a, a dainty uppity area don't mean that you might not run into a Karen or you might not run into a steel blow Joe to blow or something. You never know. So you want to really like scout what you what you about to get into, okay? Because if you're a person like me, just move somewhere with no family. If you don't like somewhere, you uncomfortable, you can't just go to an aunt's house grandma house mother house until you find another place you just gonna have to stick it out unless you want to break your lease you know you got the money to break your lease but to avoid all that just try to make the best decision on the first time and then stay there for a year and if you don't like it you can move whatever but when you first come into a new city you want to be comfortable okay i like my friend is moving down here next month she's moving from baltimore also and i'm like telling her like you just because i'm down here you still have to be comfortable with which, which you're coming from. It's just like a person going, you know, straight cold turkey from off of something they're addicted to. You're addicted to that hometown that you're living in. That's your habitat, that's your environment. So even if you move into a city, this is a bigger city. So if you move into a small city to a bigger city, that's a big difference. If you move in big city, a big city, it still might be a big difference because the different environments. You might be from up north, might be from down south moving to up north, you might be from the east coast moving to the west coast. So it just varies. But like I always say, move somewhere where you're gonna be comfortable. Kinda what type of you type of environment you was in, but better. Okay. So what I'm saying by that is if I'm from the city, I wanna live in the city. I don't want to live on the outskirts away from people when I'm trying to meet people. You got to make it make sense. So you don't want to move to a bigger city and you're trying to network and build, but you live an hour away, 45 minutes away from where the networking mostly has happened, which is Harris County, the inner part of Houston. Okay. So that's just my preference. Okay. I'd rather live in the city because I'm from the city. I'd rather live, I live in a quiet part of the city, but I still live in the city. I'm still close to everything I need to get to. Um, so just take that in consideration when finding a place. If you're a person that like to be really settled, um, real quiet, Midtown Kirby, it is quiet, but it's very expensive. Like a one bedroom is like $2,000. So, but like I said, a person like me is used to paying that much money to live somewhere. But here you get a really big space for that amount of money. 
okay? So somebody that's from Houston would say that this is expensive, but somebody from New York, somebody from Philly, somebody from uh, Delaware, somebody from Baltimore, you know, them up north cities, they will say that this is cheap because you're getting a lot for your money, okay? The square footage. If you're not a person, I'm not a person that like, they always say the square footage is 683 square feet. No, I need to see what exactly you telling me. Like, even though the square feet is there, the numbers is big or whatever, but I want to see exactly how it looks. Is it an open floor plan? How, is it all these walls? How many closets? How big is the closets? Like, like, do you have a garden tub? Do you have a stand-up shower? Do you have wash and dry? Is it st um, a stackable wash and dry? Is it his and her sinks? Like, things like that you want to take in consideration. See, me, I, my home has to be what I like. I can't just live in anything because I'm in the house most of the time. So I have to be very comfortable. I don't know about you guys, but your home is supposed to be your sanctuary. It's supposed to be your peaceful place. So you want to be somewhere where you're going to be comfortable. Okay, don't just go off the price tag with everything. Just because something is $900 in this area don't mean it's going to be good or bad. That's what I'm saying. You need to go there and actually see what's around. How far is a gas station? If it's <clears throat> a block over or a couple doors down, do people hang outside this gas station? You know, that's stuff you need to take in consideration because that can tell you what type of apartment building you're going to be living in most of the time it does if you have somebody hanging out they're going to be hanging outside that apartment building it's guaranteed so that's something you have to take in consideration especially if you move to houston downtown there's a lot of homeless people that lives downtown um mid main lofts for example um has, i'll have some couple videos about that but um that particular apartment you have on the other side like a meth clinic so you know and then across the street where the apartments are the first level is for public parking it's called mid main lofts so if you ever looked that up i'm giving you some scoop about that um the first level is for public parking so anybody can park there because you can pay to get out even your visitors if you have if you live there your visitors can park on the first level homeless people walks in and out this garage all day long they sleep on the outside of the entrance doors all day long but the rental office don't really say much but they sleep there okay so just kind of had that in your mind um i have a transitional house so i work with homeless people so i know where they are and what they do and constantly i'm always, I always been around them that's my environment, especially in the Baltimore city. So downtown Houston has a lot of homeless people. So if you're a person like me that has a dog and you wanna walk around comfortably, I mean, nowhere would be comfortable, but you wanna be a little comfortable, okay? Especially if you're a female and you're by yourself and you're walking your dog or whatever, you might get off late and you gotta walk night, but you don't wanna come outside to homeless people right on your front. Sometimes they don't bother you, sometimes they do. They might just be a beggar and they wanna beg you. That can be uncomfortable to certain people. So, you know, that's why I say you need to go to these places, go to wherever you're moving for at least a week or so. If you can, if you gotta go for four days, come back. Don't just move somewhere off of pictures, okay? You will be highly disappointed. That's, don't do that. Um, I had to get a sweater it's so cold up in here. I don't turn my air off for nobody. I love the air on. I always need the air on. Gosh, it's always got to be oh, front and center. I always need the air on. Like, I don't care who you is, what's going on. The air is not going off ever. It's too hot, but it's cold right now. Talk of the old stuff. But yeah, y'all, so um, if you have questions or anything, I'm glad to help you guys because I have been exploring. I've been here since June 2020, so 
and I'm the type of person that I like to be out. So I be driving around. I didn't probably been to almost every little city community in Houston. Um, I kind of like know my way around, but um, that's part of scouting. Like you go see, you have to explore the city. Just get yourself lost. Like don't turn the GPS on one day. Like just Saturday, you go out, you know, put something on. Just drive. Get your get your car up and just drive and just just explore just to see what's around and what's near you know just drive it's, it's such a big city you know like it takes like 45 minutes to get to north houston so you know just start moving around like over time of course you would travel the whole city but just don't be just settled in one area like move around because like you never know you might don't want to stay in this particular apartment again so you need to start sightseeing and seeing what the other counties and communities are offering so you know as they start telling you where they live and things of that nature and you can go there or whatever you know you'll start um you'll start seeing some things and um experiencing some things once you move um so a little bit about my apartment search, like how it first went, like when I first moved, because um may not know, before I moved to Houston, I was gonna move to Dallas, okay? I went to Dallas for a week. I drove the whole Dallas in a week. I was not feeling it. It felt like I was still at home, still in Baltimore. Um, maybe the the height, um, I ain't gonna say the height, but maybe like Oh, I, could, I can't really explain it, but it really just was not giving me what I wanted. Like, it just wasn't really hitting it. Like, it wasn't worth me moving there from Baltimore. Like, it really wasn't. So, I chose Houston. Um, like I said, it's a big, it is a big change. I always say that, like, it's very, um, but it it been a good like transition for me because of like it just depends on the type of person you are so it been a good you know i have my days when i'm homesick or whatever everybody's going to have a day when they're homesick or days right, y'all real quick so um you know we were just talking about the apartment search but i just wanted to throw this in there if you are i'm gonna just keep saying because you're a female but males too but that's this is really for women that are moving to a new state um by yourself or even if you're not by yourself check into your gun laws okay um we all know the world is getting really hectic you know we are now we're really experiencing life for some of us um invest in a gun okay texas laws down south laws in general are uh very different from others when it comes to guns okay invest in a gun okay i wanted to show you my little pocket rocket it's a 380 um it's a ruger um so this is how it looks it's not that big this is my hand size so it's about like my hand size literally you can put in your purse little pouches or whatever but get you a gun i mean this one is small because I wanted a small because I don't carry big bags. I'm not like a big bag person, so I would need a small something compact. You get as many as you want. At least have one, okay? Um, the 380, the bullets are, they, they're they probably about 30 to $45 a box. It's not really that expensive. You can grab a couple, whatever. Just keep them, you know, get your gun registered. It's very easy. I went to Academy and bought this gun, but you can buy guns from the pawn shop, wherever, and still get them registered to you. If you buy them from any vendor, um, like official vendors, like from a big store, of course, they wouldn't be stolen. But if you order some, if you get something from a pawn shop, it is illegal for them to sell you a stolen gun, but it is possible that it will happen. So you just make sure, you know, check and make sure it's a serial number on there. The gun doesn't um, jam, things of that nature. Keep your receipts once you buy them. Make sure you get it registered in your name. But before you can do all that, you have to get a Texas license. That's 
So Texas, Texas license or ID and then get a gun. Um, it's very easy. This is like a very easy gun. It has a strong kickback. I might, after this, I might just upload my, my video when I went to the gun range. It's very short and simple, but you can kind of see like the kickback. It's very easy to use this. Like it's very easy. It's very lightweight, very lightweight. It's very good for a girl. Like it's very easy, like very easy. Um, you just hit this button right here. And this is the bullets. You always, of course, I keep mine loaded because what's the point of having it? It's not gonna be loaded. So you never know when you might have to use it. Um, I do take mines. Ouch! I do take mines um, with me most of places I go because I do be out. So you know, it's just to protect myself because I am a female by myself here. You know, just so invest in a gun. It's so. It's plenty of free space out here. It's plenty of gun ranges. You can go, if you never even shot a gun, you can go to the gun range. You can pay, you can go there for fun. You can go there just to test out your guns. You go there, pay a couple dollars between 20 to $40 just to get in. And then you pay, if you bring your own gun and you, you get the bullets from them. It depends, but you get the bullets from them and um or you can bring your own but i said just just bring your own gun and then get the bullets from them and then leave your own bullets at home so you don't have to use those but um and then have to buy more so just take your gun unload it so you won't waste your bullets at, your personal bullets at all and then just use their bullets when you get there just say what kind of gun you have most of the time they have the bullets there at a gun range or if you know somebody that can take you out, you can go to like a farm. I mean, not a farm, but like some wooded, a wooded area or something and just practice. Guns is legal here. So um, to carry into stores and to the airport is you have to get a, a license for that. So I'm just giving advice. I'm not like a professional or anything, a gunsman or so whatever. I'm just letting you know as a person that moved to a new city um there's some things that i've seen don't want to experience been around things of that nature so just i will say protect yourself mace that doesn't work anymore um i mean you could take box it or whatever get you a gun it's if they are really inexpensive so if when you move in put that in your budget a firearm okay you're gonna spend between, I say, three fifty to nine hundred dollars, um, depending on what kind of gun you get. Like, if you want a good gun, brand new, nobody ever used, you're gonna spend some money. But if you buy a used gun, you probably can get something very small or whatever. Um, it's a lot of people that sell guns, Facebook Market or whatever, and sell it to you, and then you just get it switched over. Make sure you get it registered in your name. That's the right way to do it. So do it the right way. So all bases be covered. Get the gun registered. I don't care how big you are, how little you are, who you are, what you do, whatever. Get you a gun. Get get it registered in your name. And yeah, so you can feel a little at ease. Um, and then get you a permit to carry. They got courses or whatever you can do online, whatever the case is, and do your in-person testing to get your carrier permit, but get you a gun. And I'm out.